Hello everyone, it is your host, Seth the Programmer, and today we are talking about Minato, the fourth Hokage, and his scaling in the Naruto series, and throughout the years, the Naruto fandom has been pioneering its scaling, and even to this day, it's not done. We're coming up with new things all the time, and due to such, it's divided into many categories of thought, and with this many categories, their obvious bias coinciding with their favorite said characters comes into place, and so forth. Of those many characters, the Hokage tended to be most looked at alongside the Uchiha, and of those, the fourth Hokage Minato was always one of the more popular characters in the West, but despite this, you'll notice that he has a fan base with either incredibly low or incredibly high standards. Incredibly high standards being pretty common in any fan base, so let's not count them. <coughs> Many people seem to have a similar problem with Minato that they used to have with Hiruzen, that he always seemed like a mid-tier Kage, Sanin-esque at best type of character, but that to me always felt so wrong. But I just couldn't put my finger on it, so I decided decided to look into it and see what I saw in Minato when I first read through the series that created this feeling of higher standards and hopes I always had deep in the pit of my chest when thinking about the series. Reading through Naruto, you'll notice that the fourth Hokage is always the standard that Naruto is being measured to, and that the fourth Hokage always seems to be looming over Naruto's head and his feet. Hey Naruto, can you master a jutsu the fourth made? Hey Naruto, can you make a jutsu the fourth couldn't make? Hey Naruto, can you become as fast as the fourth Hokage? Hey Naruto, can you surpass the fourth? He's even on the first page of the entire manga being called the champion of Konoha. Even before we ever officially are given any feats by him, and he's mainly a mystery grab character, we do get some impressive lore scaling that could be used later. During part one, Orochimaru, the most powerful and most evil of all enemies of the Leaf Village, at least as described in Kishimoto's fanbook, threatens to attack and destroy Konoha. It's at this point that Hiruzen, the third Hokage, the most wise person alive in the Naruto-verse, at least at the time, states that there is nobody alive that can take on Orochimaru anymore, possibly not even himself, in which it stated if only Minato were here. Hiruzen, even in his old age, was still considered the most powerful of the five Kage, more powerful than Anoki in his particle style, the fourth Red Kage in his lightning cloak, the perfect Jinchuriki Yagura, and Rasa with his Shukaku Plus level magnet release. Hiruzen was stronger than all of them, and this is shown during the fourth Great Ninja War, when an even slightly weaker, older Hiruzen, albeit with less old man stamina restrictions, outdoes every Kage in person in the Alliance fight in Guru Guru Yamato and the Buddha statue. But it's even more interesting to consider that Minato is more than likely still more powerful than an even younger and considerably more powerful Hiruzen. Looking back to the Nine Tails attacks around 13 years before Operation Konoha Crush, Hiruzen is tasked to hold off the complete Nine Tails with the Leaf Village, while Minato has to defeat Obito with a Hashirama cell amped body. Mind you, Minato had used a substantial amount of chakra before fighting Obito via his Flying Thunder God Guiding Thunder Jutsu, which is basically him creating a massive barrier over space-time itself that rips a hole through space and teleports whatever touches it. This requires a ton of chakra and is the entire reason Minato seems to have such low stamina a lot of the time, as people underestimate what this flying Raijin barrier really is. It's abusing and transcending space-time, and when it comes to these barriers, it's even worse, as it's not just appearing at a different location, it's actually ripping through space. You could say it's similar to the Kamui, which we've all seen the insane amounts of chakra that requires to rip massive holes in space. Now, obviously, they aren't the same and have different strains, but downplaying Minato's stamina using this is a little ludicrous to me. So after Minato makes this steroid Kamui warp of a bijou bomb, he goes on to fight an Uchiha with Mengekyo feats that even Minato believes it can only be Madara. However, little to Minato's knowledge, Obito did this with just the base Sharingan, not even his Mengekyo Sharingan. As a reminder, there are many Uchiha in the Leaf Village, even those like Wicked Eyes Fugaku Uchiha, who is a legendary Mengekyo user, yet they don't seem to stack up to Obito simply being there to him. With Hashirama amps and an absurdly overpowered Mengekyo ability with that Minato claims would manipulate in belt whip pain when talking to Naruto, Minato slaps him with seemingly little effort, even while drained from his flying thunder god from earlier with the Ninetales. Pain would be the same character that would go on to dominate Sage Naruto, the godly Sage Toads of Mount Miyoboko, Jiraiya, mm. Kakashi, and every clan in the Leaf Village at all the same time. Minato then overpowers and seals off Obito from the Ninetales after blasting his Hashirama arm off with the Rasengan, and Obito is forced to retreat. Some like to downplay this by saying that Orochimaru claimed that 
that it was a mistake that Minato was chosen over him for Hokage. However, this doesn't need to be power related, as Minato was the youngest Hokage in history, and wisdom and experience was more than likely being looked at by a lot of people for this role. To further prove that it doesn't necessarily have to be power based, it should be noted that a lot of people thought Minato could actually defeat Orochimaru, and that a much stronger and older Orochimaru with summonings was getting stalemated by a suppressed gremlin aged Hiruzen, in which Orochimaru himself even states that Hiruzen from 10 years ago would have probably smacked him up. As a reminder, this Nine Tails incident where everyone was looking at Minato to save the day with Hiruzen president and then Minato was considered the fastest Vol Shinobi was 13 years ago, so it would be even worse. Getting back on track, from here the third Okage's battle with the Nine Tails was reaching its limits, and although he was much younger and strong enough to slam the Nine Tails out of the village, he couldn't do it for long. It was to the point that Hiruzen and every Shinobi fighting the Nine Tails simply stated they need to hold out until Minato could solve the problem. This makes a lot of sense also as well considering that Minato, when Kushina gave birth to Naruto, thought he could suppress the Nine Tails by himself. Minato finally appears and confirms again that it will require a large portion of Chakra to teleport the Nine Tails in its Biju Bomb away, especially after using so much high level Jutsu from earlier. He also had to react to the entire Nine Tails attacking Kushina as fast as it could and having to teleport between its attack and the teleport away despite it being so close already to begin with. This feat is also interesting considering that Naruto with a vague portion of only half the Nine Tails chakra was able to blitz the fourth Raikage to the point that it would require the Nine Tails amp to have given Naruto an advantage over the Raikage around 70 plus times. And here's Minato dodging the entire thing, albeit just not centimeters in front of his face like uh, Minato and Naruto did to the Raikage previously. I'll also leave that calc for the Nine Tails cloak that Naruto had versus the Raikage in the description. Minato and Kushina then discuss what they'll do with the Nine Tails, and Minato with Jiraiya's prophecy in mind decides that making Naruto the Jinchuriki is the best option, although Kushina thinks it's pointless to use the Reaper Death Seal to make Naruto a Jinchuriki. Minato claims that it's for the village, and Kurama picks up on this and attempts to kill an infant Naruto after Kushina's chains loosen, in which Kushina and Minato physically stop the Nine Tails arm from reaching Naruto by sacrificing themselves even further, which in a weird way is kind of a physical feat, since they're stopping the entire Nine Tails with just their bodies. This is the death of the fourth Hokage, a shinobi so fast, skilled, and powerful that the fourth Raikage actually believed that no shinobi could defeat Minato, and every nation was ordered to flee on sight after Minato, even in his weaker, younger years as a Jonin, slaughtered platoons of thousands of the Pride of the Stone, and so forth. His only real feats at the time are being able to avoid the full Nine Tails at close proximity and protect the whole village numerous times from its attacks and sealed away after bodying a Hashirama amped Mengekyo Uchiha stronger than anything they've heard of since Madara. And he stated faster than any shinobi alive, including the heroes in Orochimaru feared would murk him and any of the five Kage. He also was able to threaten the life of the fourth Raikage and the perfect Jinchuriki of the Eight Tails Killer B with just a kunai, while also trying to teach them a lesson about resolve and mutual respect. Even cutting through Killer B's partial transformations, which could deal with Obito's paths of pain, and even the Nine Tails for a brief scuffle inside of Naruto's conscious later on. So, Where's the downplay coming from? During the war arc, all of the Hokage are revived, all of them said Toby Rama at this point pretty hyped up, although Toby Rama would spend this war showing what he's about as a character to make up for that. Minato starts off by showing his body flicker that surpasses even Toby Rama. This body flicker is often mistranslated by Viz throughout all of Naruto to mean teleportation, however body flicker and teleportation are not the same thing. Body flicker is simply raw movement speed that makes you look like you're flickering or teleporting slightly. So this is Toby Rama saying that Minato's raw movement speed surpasses is his own. Viz tends to have a habit of mistranslating many things throughout the Naruto manga, especially with body flickers, but also with things like translating world to universe all the time and so forth, but that's a side point. Just thought I'd clarify, and not only does Minato arrive before Toby Rama and any others, he actually teleports a ten-tailed bijou bomb extremely casually before they even arrive to save Naruto and the others. Shortly after that, Minato reveals that he controls the nine tails, other half, and his chakra, and Minato unveils a KCM2 cloak, or QB chakra mode, 2 cloak, which is the one with the cape, which surprises the Ninetales, although the Ninetales states he already knew Minato was impressive, implying Minato actually controlled the Ninetales, although it's ambiguous. From here, Minato is able to create an entire plan before Hiruzen is even aware, and creates markers before anybody can even see him move, and Tobirama complements his strikes with a 2, implying it's connected to his statement of Minato having a faster body flicker speed than he does. Minato is looking just as legendary and hyped up as you think he would be. From here, Minato vouches to 
stop Madara and blitzes over to finish Madara off before Obito is forced to revive him with the Reni Rebirth. However, this would be a fatal error, and Minato would then go on to slash apart Obito himself, and realize that Obito was the man who attacked the village all those years ago. This is overlooked, but for a brief moment, let me describe who Minato is. Minato is a golden child, a person who has always been very successful in life, and is always praised for his actions. He believes that what he's doing is almost always right, and so long as it's defending the village, the consequences of his actions will be seen as good and will justify themselves. Even when Kushina questioned Minato using the Reaper Death Seal when it wasn't necessary to stop the Ninetales incident, Minato said, sorry, but the future of the village should not be forsaken. The balance cannot be upset. He had to seal the Nine Tails into Naruto to not upset the balance of the village and to protect it from Madara in the future. Even though he was basing this all on his gut feeling, the death of his wife wasn't a loss. So long as the village wins, he wins, forsaking his son's normal life in the process. Even his students, Rin and Obito, died. He was Hokage and had saved the war. He won. Now, while he was obviously hurt by these things, he always felt he was right or good in some capacity or another. Even during the start of the war after he was reanimated, Minato is grinning almost the entire time, realizing all his plans and hopes he thought were true were coming true. However, after realizing that Obito was the one who attacked the village, he realized he had catastrophically failed and could have prevented a large miasma that flowed over the shinobi world, all of which followed from his own failure. To his student who he let down now scolding and somewhat bullying him even about how much of a loser he is. This actually strikes a chord with Minato, and it wasn't something he could seemingly shrug off as long as he won anymore. Those days were over. In fact, there were so many pages dedicated to Minato's distress, it can make its own long manga chapter. So it baffled me that it was often overlooked, which even the data bug refers to as Minato's days that he snaps out of thanks to his son Naruto. With this mental distress, Minato's arm was lobbed off after he was caught off guard, and his combat prowess drastically became sluggish and lacking those snappy responses you would expect from the yellow flash. That and alongside the fact that he was using a massive reserve of chakra teleporting bombs, Minato did not look good for a few chapters. He was what the data book calls in a daze. However, even with those things in mind, once Obito was defeated and Minato placed the future and his true hopes in Naruto after the Ninetales lectured him, he admitted his failure to Obito and came back to his senses. Even with no chakra from the god tree after it was stolen, and after using so many space-time warps, he was still able to hold off Black Zetsu merged with Renegon Obito with Kakashi's help, which is a ridiculous feat actually, as even one of the lesser Zetsu known as Guru Guru, when fused with an unconscious Yamato, could hold off the entire Shinobi alliance, let alone the Black Zetsu, which is Kaguya's essence. This alongside the fact that prior, that Black Zetsu was able to use Obito's body that literally had its heart and spine ripped out by Kakashi and couldn't even stand, shot chakra rods out of his arms that could even counter EMS Sasuke's Susano arrows dipped in Amaterasu that Tobirama earlier said was flame control he's never even seen before. So even heavily fatigued Edo, base Minato, that earlier couldn't even use flying Raijin a single time with the drained KCM is competing with Zetsu Obito, which is actually, like I said, an insane feat in itself and proves even further the massive nerf he had earlier from psychological distress. He would then go on to save Mike Guy from Madara's true-seeking barrage and give his final hopes to Naruto. Naruto now reaching his level, Minato can no longer give him that stunning pat on the head, literally and metaphorically, and everything worked out. He then wished him a happy birthday, and in conclusion, Minato is an insanely fast character even faster than the younger third Hokage that was stronger than any of the Kage 13 years later and was fast enough to blitz between the full nine tails at close proximity and was a massive help in the final struggles against Obito even when tired and extremely mentally distraught. And we've seen how mental distress affects a fighter as seen with Hiruzen versus Orochimaru or even Zabuza versus Kakashi. You could also argue that due to the fact that he was already rivaling the full QB in speed that having a half QB cloak while reanimated wouldn't actually increase his speed all that much, or wouldn't it be nearly as drastic as it was for Naruto, which I feel is something that people also try to downplay and take out of proportion. It should also be noted, I think, as one of Minato's main combat traits, that his ceiling jutsu is the most advanced in the verse, basically. is one of the strongest ceiling jutsu users in the entire verse. He has a Uzumaki tier knowledge on how it works, and is able to make masterful seals that even surprises the Raikage, and their village seals away the A-Tails constantly, as it always 
always like breaks out of this Jinchuriki and so forth. So Minato, along with all of these crazy stats, also is able to seal you away, even probably with his normal sealing jutsu, if you are not nine tails to your in strength. So that is also something to keep in mind. Now, before we end off this Minato scale that I hope you all enjoy. Wait a second, Seth. I'm going to need you to hold on because I have a big announcement to make to you guys. And that is that you guys, after finishing this video, should go check out this Hiruzen video on the screen right now. Pretty much throughout the entire Minato video, Seth did refer to Hiruzen quite a lot throughout the video. And if you're curious why he did hype up Hiruzen so much, please go check out this video as it is one of the most underrated videos on the channel and one of the actual best ones because, you know, when you look at part one Naruto, you remember how high Hiruzen was, but after that, he sort of doesn't give you that same feel, and it's pretty sad to see how underrated he is, whereas if you guys want to actually learn about why we speak about him in such a positive light, then please go check out the Hiruzen video that's on the screen, it will be linked in the description below. I also want to say that I really hope you all enjoyed this Minato-related video, and that if you get the chance, once again, go check out the Hiruzen video, but with that being said, I hope you all have yourselves a great day.